Good morning, everybody. I'm here at um, Clintondale Middle School in room 111, and I'm here today to talk about the quiz that's coming tomorrow. And the quiz is an essay exam, and I'm going to give you one question. That's the good news about the quiz, and you are going to have time to answer it in a paragraph form. So here we go. Let's talk about um, the question itself is explain what capitalism is and how the U.S. government helped it grow in the 1820s. The first thing that I would do if I was writing this essay is indent. Okay, the first thing I would do is indent, and I would make sure that my spelling is as close to right as possible and my handwriting is easy to read. Um, the next thing I would do is I would define what capitalism is. And what capitalism is, is defined in your book as an economic system based on the private ownership of farms and businesses. And... Um, that's pretty much that pretty much sums it up. Capitalism is if you own it, you can sell it, and if you make money on it, you can keep that money. Now, um, how did the U.S. government come into play in this um, in this system called capitalism? Well, Henry Clay. The next part of the question is about the American system, and Henry Clay, a congressman, had an idea that the United States government would benefit from businesses and farms doing well because if businesses and farms did well the government could you know raise taxes on them because they have money and then the government could actually make more money too so the government had an interest in making sure that businesses were doing well um, the American system that Henry Clay developed had three parts the first part was a transportation system and this is a day where um, roads and um, there was no such thing as railroads. There was no airplanes back then. So transportation was basically done by foot or by horse. And um, roads needed to be improved. They also built canals. Um, canals are like man-made rivers that stretch between waterways so boats could travel to bring products. Um, but this transportation aspect of the American system made it so products could get from the factory or from the farm to the market or that raw materials could get from the woods, from the mines, wherever, to the factory. So transportation is very important, getting workers to the factory, getting workers home from the factory, getting customers to the markets. So it was in the government's best interest to make a good transportation system. The next part of the American system that I want to talk about is the National Bank. The National Bank um, is not the same National Bank that Alexander Hamilton made. It was the second National Bank, and it would work basically the same way. The tax money would be put into this National Bank, and then people could apply for loans from this bank, and those loans were mainly to start businesses, and when those businesses flourished, those loans would be paid back. Um, people who were against the National Bank mostly were people who weren't going to benefit from these loans, people who were too poor to get loans because they didn't have any collateral to give to the government to get those loans. The next part of the American system that I wanted to talk about is um, the tariff system. And I'm going to post something on Edmodo below about what a tariff is, but basically it's a tax on imported goods, things that are coming from other countries. And the purpose of a tariff is to make products from other countries more expensive, thus making products made in the United States less expensive and more favorable for Americans to buy. And the more American products that are bought, the better the businesses are doing, the better the businesses are doing, the more taxes they could pay, the more taxes they could pay, the stronger the national government is going to be. And... Um, the more secure the people will be, and that's the point of view of Henry Clay. Another major aspect to um, this federal capitalism that is starting to emerge is the, the emergence of John Marshall, who is the Supreme Court Chief Justice. And in a couple of Supreme Court cases he rules on, specifically McClintock versus Maryland, Maryland sues the national government saying they can't set up a bank in Maryland because Maryland already has a bank of Maryland. And uh, Marshall says, no, the federal government has the right to make this bank and that the federal government is going to trump the desire of the state government. And that is Marshall's main thing that he talks about a lot is Marshall's rulings almost always favor the federal government over the state governments. The other one that um, he ruled on was Gibbons versus Ogden, which basically said that the federal government was the only government in America 
that was um, able to regulate interstate commerce. In other words, um, New Jersey can't put a tariff on products from Pennsylvania or vice versa. So there wouldn't be trade wars in America between the states. So it pretty much made the federal government kind of the babysitter between the states and making trade and policies and regulations. So um, just a quick recap. We have um, the capitalism is the private ownership of businesses and farms. We have Henry Clay's American system, which is a three-part system to help um, capitalism grow in the United States, help businesses take off, help people get to businesses, um, help um, stop foreign competition with our businesses. And then John Marshall, who is the first Supreme Court Chief Justice, who is going to rule in cases giving the federal government power over the states when it comes to banking and when it comes to, to interstate commerce. Um, if you have all that stuff in your essay question, you are going to get a great grade on it. Um, we're going to see how it goes. I want to make sure that you have this video to study from. I hope that it turned out good. And I hope that you watched it, took some notes, and come ready to take this quiz tomorrow. So um, without further ado, have a nice day, and God bless America.